There we go. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Bill Russell. I'm the Associate Dean International here at the University of Dundee School of Business. And today we're very lucky to be able to talk to uh, Jamie Battles, who's the Managing Director of Pagoda Projects. And Pagoda Projects is um, the, the company that manages our internships for the postgraduate students and soon the undergraduate students as well. Uh, and the, pro, uh, the internships are in China, Vietnam, Mexico, and here in the UK, it's in Manchester as it goes along. So welcome, Jamie. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks, Bill. Great to be here. Now, um, I've just got a few questions as we'll go through uh, so that people can get to know a little bit about yourself. So tell us uh, where you come from and, and where you are now at the moment. Well, um, I'm from the UK. I'm a bit of a, a mongrel when it comes to whereabouts. I was born in the south of England and then kind of raised in the north of England in Sheffield. Um, since then, I've been on a bit of a wandering journey to Manchester, where I am now, via China and uh, Vietnam, Germany along the way, and studied in Liverpool. So yeah, a few different places, and uh, now in Manchester. And did you go to university as well? Yeah, in Liverpool. I studied um, business studies with German uh, at the University of Liverpool. And do you consider yourself still fluent in German? Well, I do ask myself that question sometimes. Um, supposedly, yes. I okay. do still speak to my German friends fairly regularly, so I do get to speak German. But um, yeah, if I was thrown into, into a native speaking environment in Germany, uh, I'm not sure how I'd get on. I'd like to think I'd be all right. OK, that. so is your Chinese better than your German? Oh, no, my German's still better than my Chinese. All right, OK. okay. So we, get, we, we understand Chinese, so. how these all go. Yeah. So um, now there's an interesting story about how you started the, the company um, right back in the early days. Do you, can you tell us about how you came to decide? It, originally, it was called Intern China, wasn't it? Yeah, well, originally it had a very long winded name when I met uh, my co-founder. And um, yeah, so I, I kind of after graduation, I worked for a couple of years in the UK and um, I had itchy feet. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to learn another language and um, I just found the idea of China to be very appealing. I wanted to go somewhere that was fundamentally different and um, and see what I learned there really. So um, did a bit of a bit of travel, um, went around places like Vietnam and in a long-winded way, ended up going back there years later. Um, entered China on foot uh, over the, the Vietnam-China border, um, explored southern China for a while in Yunnan province and, um, and then went to Qingdao uh, to, to study some Chinese, to try and learn the language. And um, that's where I met Frank, who's a, a German German graduate. Um, so we had that kind of uh, German language in common. And, and he had a business called International Business Exchange China Company Limited, I think. So, so I kind of uh, got to know him and thought this, this could be something that with a bit of work could really kind of be something really fun. Uh, and something that I believed in. He was kind of bringing German students to China to do homestays, language courses, um, and uh, to, a, to a lesser extent, internships. And um, yeah, I could, had, a, had a few chats with him, decided that it was something that we could, could do together, uh, went into business. And one of the first things I did was rebrand as Intern China, by internchina.com. Um, and then, yeah, the, the company went from there, spent nearly four years in China and, um, grew the business uh, over there and um, yeah, rebranded as Pagoda Projects, I think it's three years ago now. Okay, okay. Um, partly the reason you rebranded as Pagoda Projects was because you expanded into other markets other than China in a big way. So there was a, a broader range. Yeah, and we, we found the, the, the company name in turn China was incredibly res restricting as yes. we did that. Um, and as we have ambitions to, to keep growing, it, it would only be restricted if we kept launching interns somewhere else. Yes. So okay. we wanted a, a kind of a parent brand and okay. it, we wanted something that would give us more flexibility. So we picked something incredibly vague, which would allow us to do all sorts of different things in the future and never be kind of restricted by our name. So when you first went into China, take yourself back. You're a much younger person. How long ago is that? That was in 2009. Okay, so only 11 years ago. Yeah. So when you first went into China, you hadn't been there before, had you? No. Right. So what's the, tell us about, describe your first impressions as you moved into China uh, from Vietnam. 
Yeah, I've, I mean, I've still got a photo of that border crossing, believe it or not, of um, my wife, who's my was my girlfriend at the time. And um, it it just kind of everything changes. I think it just we were in Vietnam. So obviously we were in a somewhere that was a foreign environment to us. But going from Vietnam to China, everything suddenly changed. And um, yeah, I, I, I felt that the things that struck me were the language, the the Chinese Chinese language being everywhere and not being able to understand anything. Um, the food, there was just food immediately. There was food everywhere and everything smelt great. And every, I wanted to eat everything that I saw. Um, and the commerce, that was the other thing. You could just, everything was so busy. And you can even see from the photo I took that there was people kind of like carting goods from one place to another. Every little shop had some kind of hive of activity going on. And I just thought this is somewhere that I'm going to enjoy because I'm going to eat well and it's going to be fast, <laughs> furious and fun. So, okay. yeah. Um, I, so you I, came across the border now. Did, were you walking on a bus by, by train? How, do you have to walk across the border and then get on a bus? What's the what's the process at the yeah, Vietnam to, border in those to, days? Yeah, we walked it. We walked across the, the border. Um, I think we'd taken a bus to to Sapa in northern Vietnam, where the where the rice terraces are. It's really beautiful. Um, and then we were able to walk across the border from there. Um, the the border crossing is is very striking. There's a big big gates there that you walk through. Um, and I remember the border officials took a, a keen interest in our Lonely Planet guide, kind of looking through all the different bits. And um, I think they were looking at maps of of great of China and the region, and you know seeing how it was portrayed in the Lonely Planet guide. Um, but apart from that, no, I, I think we, we kind of walked across, we were in the, the border town and I think we stayed somewhere fairly close by. Um, we then, a few days later, after kind of exploring that, that kind of border area, we wanted to go to Kunming on a bus. Um, and I remember going to the bus, the bus station in this, uh, in this village where we were <laughs> wanting to go to Kunming. And there was, I think, two buses parked there, both with the engine off. And one of them had no driver. One of them, the, the driver was asleep um in the in the front of the bus um every destination on the timetable was in chinese we didn't understand <laughs> anything. Um, and there was like a small flock of chickens like running around the and, and no one else to be seen so we kind of thought mm, maybe we should uh try and learn some chinese at this stage so um yeah we, we did get to kunming eventually but it was okay. a fun experience getting there but think of the change i mean you were there and that you're describing the border with vietnam uh 11 years ago have you been yeah. back near the border since then no but i think watching watching china evolve and change in front of our eyes was one of the best things about about living there hmm. and also we could see it whilst living there. And then it's even more striking, like you, going back on a regular basis to see the change. Each time, I know. Six months. And I, I think that's, that's why we, we want, part of the reason why we wanted to encourage more young people to go and explore China is that to see that change happening in front of your eyes is fascinating. And you can still see it when you go back now. Um, it's just a different sort of phase of, of that evolution. I think I remember having a conversation with you a number of years back about how one of the real routes to sort of tolerance and understanding and, and business understanding is to actually uh, immerse yourself in the culture and the business culture in the country, or in, a, in a foreign country. Um, and uh, I remember that being one of your, your um, motivations for setting up internships. You thought that this was actually incredibly useful for people to be able to go and be in in different environments, different cultural environments, business environments as it goes along. Yeah, I think so. And, and you could do that anywhere, I think. I did that in, in Germany and I, yes. I learned a lot from that experience. And, and doing it in China is, I saw it as just, you know, another level because it's so drastically different and the way of doing business is so different. Um, and you can, you know, you can learn from those differences, I think. So while you're overseas and you look back at the United Kingdom, where you come from and grown up, did it change your perspective of the United Kingdom by being overseas? Absolutely. I think that's one of the one of the strongest kind of learning points of, of overseas travel in general, but especially spending an extended period of time overseas, that that reflection. Um, and I think you, you can do that. You do that quite naturally. You do that. 
by meeting people from different places around the world and comparing whilst you're there and relating it to the, the context of where you are, where you happen to be, and reflecting back. And then also, I think the, the, um, the change of your perspective is really cemented when you return. So when you return to the UK after a period of living somewhere else, it, it re- your, your mind really starts to adjust and, and start to see your kind of typical home environment in a different way, having been outside of that. Well, I found that um, I'm originally Australian, as you know, and I found that by being overseas, uh, you get to look at the uh, Australia, but you're looking at Australia through other people's eyes. And rather than looking at Australia through Australian eyes, you start to look at Australia through whoever you're with. If you're with students who are from um, Latin America or Egypt or, or whatever, you're looking at Australia as they see you. And it does pull you up. It makes you think, you know, what, what have I missed when I was just sitting immersed in, in Australia as we're going along? Yeah. So um, now listen, about five years ago, we uh, met you. Uh, I think it was an important meeting because it's led to a very long and um, successful working relationship between Pagoda Projects and the School of Business. Um, we initially started off by having internships after students graduated, didn't we? And we yeah. found that wasn't working. And so uh, the, the thing that was causing that not to work was that once people graduated, they wanted to go off and get a job, which is completely sensible, or they wanted to travel in Europe before they went home. Um, so there was a good reason not to go on an internship. So then we changed it so that the internship was part of the business project on the master's degrees. So it was one of three ways to do the, the business project. Now that transformed the whole process as, um, as it turned out. Students wanted to do the internship. They wanted to write their projects based on that. So can you talk us through a little bit about how Pagoda Projects supports the students before they go and then once they're overseas as well? Yeah, I think um, we've kind of built the whole, the whole model and our whole business based on support, really. That's the, the, the thing that kind of stands out as the most valuable for, for the participants. Um, terms of having we have our own sort of permanent staff of people who work for us in the UK and in the destinations where internships take place so I think building that relationship between our team and every student is really important Um, so that begins uh, really when students take an interest in in the program so we'll be kind of either on campus or on zoom uh, or on teams promoting the opportunity to to students when they first uh, sort of start their their journey at the University of Dundee and um, talk to them about you know what what our program entails what they can expect um, answer their questions um, and uh, have have kind of first taste of what it is they can expect from Pagoda Um, between then and commencing their internship um, we'll be talking back and forth with each student about their their application so discussing what their aims are what they want to gain from from an internship um, what their priorities are, um, talk about sector preferences, uh, talk about job roles, and, and also what they want to achieve in their future career beyond uh, the, the degree program, um, so that we can try and tailor the, the internship to their, their ambitions. Um, so, so the support starts there really with our UK team. Um, when the program commences, uh, we have a, a thorough orientation, um, and uh, we have a kind of ongoing social program so that uh, students can kind of get to know all of the other students on, and recent graduates on our programs. Um, we run regular events as part of the University of Dundee program. Uh, we also have uh, two specific workshops with the, for the in-person internship programs, which, which accompany the, uh, the internships and uh, a networking event for the students to really put those um, networking skills into practice, build their network. Um, and then our team are on site to support throughout. So whether that's uh, an online program, uh, sort of guiding students through that through that process and, and coaching them through uh, their internship um, or the wider program, uh, or supporting with any kind of on-site issues if the internships are taking place in person, um, resolving any issues related to accommodation, um, anything that crops up on the internship they want to discuss. So our team are really there to, to kind of provide pretty hands-on support throughout the, the period of internship. 
Okay, so a couple of things there. So uh, right at the beginning, uh, you do come and you uh, give information about the four destinations, China, Vietnam, Mexico, and Manchester. Now, um, pre-COVID, you were doing that in person, but I think last year we did it uh, online, or did we get it in and just before COVID no, we lockdown? Got it, we got it in just in time, yeah. All right, okay. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens uh, at the beginning of next year when you would normally come and talk to the students as it goes along. Um, you do a lot of um, pre-departure um, uh, support as well about uh, visas and and uh, just getting people ready to go overseas. Can you talk a little bit about that as well? Yeah, it's, it seems like a lifetime ago that we were <laughs> we were doing the in-person programs for hundreds of students. You know, it's really not that long ago. But yeah, we manage the whole process. So for all of the different destinations, um, we we kind of handle all of the practicalities for for students. So um, it's visa invitations, visa applications, um, helping the students with that side of things, um, preparing for all the practical side of, of living in the country um, that they're going to. Um, we book the accommodation, we manage the accommodation. So students will be living in apartments um, where there are other students on our programs in the same block. So they, they get to kind of have that kind of familiarity around them whilst, whilst living in a, in a foreign country. Um, so yeah, the, going back to the, the pre-departure, I guess, um, we, have our, we have our team here in Manchester and we're there, kind of there to sort of walk students through that, that process. Um, so things like the insurance is included, um, giving students information about the insurance policy, all of the details for that. Um, if they need help with kind of looking at flight routes, flight booking, all of the practicalities. Okay. Um, and then also on the kind of cultural side and, and preparing for the life as an intern in somewhere that they may not have been before. Um, our team have kind of years of experience of, um, of these destinations. So I'd um, like to think we're, we're in a good position to prepare the students culturally and uh, in terms of the, the working environment too. So you also mentioned the networking. I've always been impressed with that. Now, the reason why you can do these networking and social events in country when they are in country is because all of the students go to the same town. So at the moment, I think in China, it's Chengdu. Correct. In yeah. Vietnam, where's Vietnam's destination? In Ho Chi Minh City. Ho Chi Minh City. In Mexico, is it Mexico City? Mexico City, yeah. And then Manchester. So all of the students are in the same town so that they can uh, meet up with each other and support each other in a social sense, but also it allows you to put on uh, networking events uh, with the biz local businessmen. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the networking events in the different towns? Yeah, so we, we spend um, a great deal of time in each destination kind of building ourselves into the local business community. Um, so that's partly by kind of going out and meeting businesses on a one-to-one -one basis, but a lot of that takes place through events and through the associations of which we're a part. So um, we're members of the, the chambers of commerce for, for different regions of the world, for example. Um, so we're able to work together with those partners to bring together the business community with all of our student participants. So, um, and, and also as of recent years, we kind of bring our local um, university partners into the mix as well. So we're connecting University of Dundee students with um, kind of on a peer to peer basis with, with local students, um, which is also really valuable to see what life is like through the lens of a, of a student in that, in that territory and to make local contacts who are of a similar kind of uh, age and at a similar stage of their education. I think is really valuable and proves really valuable in the years afterwards, um, but also connecting them with with businesses in different sectors to get a feel for um, what a career might be like in their chosen sector uh, in that destination uh, to get a feel for that as well. So we use our kind of broader network. We use the the events that we have ongoing anyway, and we kind of bring all of those things together for, for the University of Dundee students. So um, so the University of Dundee um, contracts this with you and it for the student, the actual internship is free. It's eight weeks long and it's free. Um, they have to pay for their visa. What, what expenses are they covering? They, they have to cover visa expenses and travel. And what what don't they have to cover? So vi visas are included, actually. So oh, are uh, they? OK, excellent. So yeah, on, a pra on a practical level, we cover um, things like we cover the visa, uh, we cover insurance and accommodation. So it's kind of furnished. Um, semi-serviced accommodation uh, throughout the, the, the eight-week internship period. 
Um, so the major costs for the students, if they opt for one of the overseas uh, internship destinations, the, the major cost is the flight. So the flight between the UK and that destination um, and some kind of day to day, day to day living costs. OK, the, and they would normally have their day to day living costs in the UK anyway. So yeah. really, the, the difference is the accommodation. And if you're not paying accommodation here, then that oh, sorry, the difference is is just living costs and the travel. So uh, yeah. maybe that uh, balances out with the accommodation cost being free as it goes yeah. along. I think the cost um, of living in, the, in most of our destinations is um, sort of relatively affordable compared yeah, to Yeah, it's cheaper. Scotland. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about the companies that they how how that works. How do they get embedded as an intern in one of the in one of the companies? So we we have um, built partnerships with hundreds of companies actually. Um, we have nearly a thousand internship positions across all of our destinations. Um, our aim is to really focus on the experience of every student. So we don't really focus on the, the brand name of the business or um, the, the kind of size of, of the business. We focus more on what they can offer for a student in terms of learning, applying their knowledge, um, and really getting involved in, in the day-to-day -day activities of, of that organization. So, a lot of the businesses we work with are small to medium sized. We do have a fair few sort of larger organizations um, with internships in, in different departments. Um, we have domestic organizations, but the, the vast majority of, of companies we work with are, are international. Um, so um, things like a, kind of a, a branding agency, for example, in Mexico, or a, a shipping company in China, um, or an engineering firm, a manufacturing company, a consultancy, um, finance and accounting. These are all areas that are, that are popular with students, but also we have kind of good coverage in, in terms of our um, the businesses that we work with. Um, but for us, the, the key is is you know what, how engaged the student will be whilst they're spending the okay. time with that business. And uh, I understand that you you try to line up the program and the pathway with the internship so that if you're on a finance program, then you'll be in a sort of a finance related area or marketing, you're in a marketing related area. Um, Correct. So there is, so that it's relevant internship for the program that you're on. Correct. Yeah. So we, we, we do everything we do is to try and create excellent outcomes for students. So usually if we think a student is going to have a far more positive experience, if the internship aligns with their area of study or their area of interest. That being said, sometimes students want to experiment. So their, their area, of, as long as it's kind of sort of not a million miles away from their area of study, if it's something that they've, they've taken a module in or that they're interested in for their future career, just experimenting with, we can be flexible to that as well. Um, but also you could say, for example, a, a subject area like marketing, marketing can be applied to, to virtually any sector you know so if you've got a, a subject if your specialist subject is marketing but you want to experiment with a with a certain sector then we have marketing internships with tech companies with manufacturing firms with consultancies with non-profits you know there's different combinations of kind of subject area and sector that you, that students can consider so that's all all straightforward or relatively straightforward um, we should also talk a little bit about COVID and the, how it affected the internships last year. Now, we talked about this, I think, as early as February, once COVID was just starting to show itself, and we thought that we needed to um, have a contingency plan in case it became serious. Um, the School of Business contracted with you 100 students to go on an internship. 92 went in the end and 18 of those were face-to-face -face in China. They were students that went back to China and went to uh, Chengdu to do the internship face-to-face. -face. So um, the face-to-face -face ones just went normally. Can you tell us a little bit about how the, the rest of them, the ones which were done remotely online, how they were handled uh, uh, last year and presumably again this year uh, going forward, if yeah. it's necessary? <laughs> yeah, I think in future we want to be able to give students a choice what, which format suits their um, suits their circumstances the best when when COVID is is no longer a, a barrier. Um, so yeah, like you said, though we talked we talked fairly early on in the year and we decided very quickly that we wanted to 
to adapt and be able to offer a, a program which takes place online. But then fairly quickly after that, when we were planning this with our team, we decided that we, we couldn't just bring the internships online. We had to do something more. We had to try and build a program around these online internships, which gave students a real insight into the culture. It's one thing that is kind of non-negotiable for us. That's one of the the key the key elements of is kind of cultural learning and um, developing into cultural fluency. Um, but we also wanted a sense of community. Uh, a big thing for for the students on our in-person programs is is feeling like they're part of. A kind of a community on a peer-to-peer -peer basis with with other students on our program but also part of the local um, business community and wider community so um so yeah um, long story short we ended up um working with a with a partner uh, to develop an app um, so the app is very much centered around community um so that students for next year's program if it's online will we'll be able to download the app um, to interact with other participants, to interact with, with businesses who are on the platform, to interact with our team. Um, and we pair the students with a, with a cultural mentor so that they have that kind of regular contact um, on a peer-to-peer -peer basis with a, with a local student. Um, so we've really developed a, a set of kind of components around the internship to make the, the online experience more of a kind of you know, overall experience rather than just completing an internship online. So if you are doing face to face uh, next year, do they make use of this app as well, just to be able to keep in touch with everybody uh, while they're in country? Yeah, so one, one of the, so there's a couple of things that we think are real positives to have come out of this um, kind of development, I guess. So one is like you say, applying some of these kind of online components to the real, real world kind of in-person internships. I think a lot of it will be very useful um, to, to kind of help help students to, to, to take their in-person experience and to kind of articulate it um, through, the, through the functions that we have on the app and to, to really have like another, another layer of connection um, with, with other people. Um, but the other thing for us as, a, as an organization, it helps us to be more inclusive. So um, in the future, if we, if we have student groups um, who, who aren't able to travel or don't don't want to travel it kind of brings the program even closer to them as well so yeah for us there's there's definitely advantages to having that on offer um, when when programs do return to in person so i think uh, we've covered quite a lot of ground so far jamie uh, i've always enjoyed working with you and with the go to projects your enthusiasm and commitment to the students and the, the whole process and the whole ideal of of uh, getting people to experience other cultures and business environments uh, just permeates all the way through everybody that I meet at Pagoda Projects, both here in, in the UK and overseas. So um, thank you for so it's such a careful, thoughtful way that you look after the after our students and also um, build the program so as to suit them rather than suiting other people along the way. Um, I'm glad it comes across that way. Thanks, Bill. It's, it's no, no, it does. It really does. With you and the team. It's been hugely successful. All the feedback, the students come back and they use terms like, you know, this was a life changing experience and things like that. We're very pleased that the life changing experience was the internship and not the, <laughs> the degree itself. <laughs> but still, um, wherever the life changing experience comes from, we're really pleased for that. So um, maybe we leave it there, Jamie. Uh, you're fabulous and wonderful. Please uh, thank all of your team for us as well. And uh, we'll see you sometime soon. If you stay online, Thanks, we can Bill. talk after we finish the re recording. Okay, bye, Jamie. See you.